We're going to take a look at the orcs that are being released for Amazon's Rings of Power TV show. These came out in an IGN article, IGN.com. We'll link it below. And it shows us quite a few orcs. So let me bring up that article here first. So this is it. Um, they talk a little bit about them. Uh, they let us know that these orcs uh, are scattered, that these orcs, there weren't many orcs left. They're in sort of roaming bands at this point before they are uh, uh, brought together by a greater evil. Uh, and here we have some images. So maybe let's go through the images uh, so we have an idea of what they look like, and then we can kind of talk about the specifics of this article. So here we have uh, an, an orc. Uh, that is running in some way, shape, or, or form. It looks like he's got a scythe almost, I'm thinking. Scythe with an axe. Something interesting. Probably an axe right there. Uh, <clears throat> with some sort of leather uh, jerkin right here and up here uh, in a forest. This looks like that place that actually we see Air and Deer, Prince of Physics, grab the arrow out of the air and uh, shoot it back. As I said, at some nasty orcs in the distance. So probably one of them right here. We have another orc that's running at another battle of some sort. Um, these orcs are definitely more thin, more skeletal. They remind me a little bit more of um, of the Moria orcs that we saw in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, not the Urukai from Saruman. Uh, this is yeah. Are, are we going to go back and talk about each one, or are we just we will? Uh, yeah, I just want to kind of bring them up. Here's another orc. Uh, I'm guessing this is Arendir. Maybe I don't know. Could be somebody else. Who knows? Uh, there's another one, again, more thinner, a little bit lighter colored. Less battle scarred is the way that they put it. Uh, these are some orcs, perhaps, perhaps in Moria. Yep. Or in some sort of uh, other... Under, uh, underground, definitely. Underground castle, yep. And then uh, again, right here, uh, wearing similar things. Is this guy the same guy as this one? Yep, same one right there. Same one that has the same headgear uh, and the same weapon right there. All right, so we get some quotes from uh, a few characters who are working on this show, one of them being Lindsay Weber, the executive producer on the series who came from Star Trek and Mission Impossible. I hope that's like Star Trek The Next Generation or Deep Space Nine or Voyager and not Star Trek Discovery because um, that would not be my favorite thing in the world. Uh, and uh, Weber, Lindsay Weber, said this, uh, well, I love works. I love creature design, so I'm very happy to talk about this stuff. The very first page of their Bible, the showrunners, was about orcs. They have a real passion for them. They love, they love practical prosthetics and design. That's good. I think practical is going to be way better because we saw The Hobbit and how that turned out with um, the big white orc. Um, and, and that just, it never felt good. It felt uh, weightless and, and odd. Uh, and they felt they needed the exploration, given that this is the second age and thousands of years of before the events of the third, third age. It was really important to them to treat this as their own culture, so a culture of orcs, not just roaming bands of wild men, I guess, or wild creatures, and explore their world on its own two legs and its own two rights. So we get an exploration of orcs and what makes them tick. Uh, and then uh, perhaps more importantly is where they describe what it means to be an orc in the second age. They felt it was appropriate that their look would be different, part of a wilder, more raw second age Middle Earth, closer to where the first age ends. As we meet them, they're not yet organized into armies. They're a little more scattered and they've been scavenging. So it's just a different time in their story. Uh, yeah, they're going, they're going for more of a, uh, these, aren't, these aren't the orcs that we know from uh, the Lord of the Rings, but these are the orcs that we see right after I mean, it's not really right after the big battle in, uh, the, is it near, near Nathan Nord yet? Is that the next one? I can't remember. Dagger, Regola? Anyway, I don't remember the, all the battles name. That's why we're rereading the Silmarillion, Silmarillion in our podcast. Uh, but uh, they go on to say they've been wiped off of Middle Earth and they really regressed into the dark, small little groups and hid away, lived in tunnels. Um, I guess this is where you could say they became sort of those, maybe the the trolls, the orcs, the... Uh, that we saw in The Hobbit. Uh, this is really them coming out and reforming under a new so-called leader who's going to lead them forward. And then here's the important part. There are some female orcs that I truly loved. And first, this is right. There are female orcs. This mm -hmm. is how orcs are created. They are actually procreate. Um, we read that in the film. Well, we will read that. I think we came across that already in the Silmarillion. Uh, I can't remember because I'm reading for it. We did. But um, yeah, so the, the, that is correct. There are female orcs. But there's an orc, a female orc in particular, if I'm reading this correctly, who's very tall and very strong and who has a particularly enjoyable fight with one of our elven characters that I suspect will be or hope will be a favorite among fans. And let me be, uh, make a prediction that we're going to see a female orc 
warrior take on a female elf warrior, which will be Galadriel. I hope I'm wrong, but we know that's going to happen. They're going to pump up this female orc to be super strong and be impressive and take out a bunch of elves. And then we're going to see Galadriel, who's taken out a bunch of orcs, and they're going to clash in the same way that probably, you know, Eric Orn and the Urukai clashed uh, at the death of Boromir uh, wait, in the Lord of the Rings. Didn't you sign an NDA saying that you weren't allowed to reveal these details? Uh, I'll take my chances this time. I have a pretty good lawyer, so I, I think I'll, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's what we're seeing here. Is uh, I mean, I think the orcs look good. I have no problems with the way that they look at all. I don't know if you guys have any issues. Um, I'll throw it at you. But um, Dan, do you have any thoughts about these orcs and 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 how they look first before we get into maybe the details of how they act? They look like orcs to me. I mean. <laughs> They look pretty orcish. I, 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 I like how rugged they are, and I, I like uh, just their 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 tattered clothes. Uh, I think the, um, the the practical effects look great. Uh, I think I think as far as orcs go, that we're used to from the films and and other adaptations, that it, it looks good to me. I also like the orcs. I, th- I think they're, yeah. they, the physical the physical um, makeup is that it's way superior to the, anything in the Hobbit movies. Oh, that and, was ridiculously bad. And uh, and I and I really like this the the distinct differences that they're doing between these orcs and the mm-hmm. and the, and mm-hmm. the works of the Lord of the Rings series, the Jackson yeah. series. So yeah. I, I'm liking what I'm seeing as yeah. far as the, uh, the the style goes. I like how they have um, sort of monotone colors which is very would be very um appropriate to things living right underground where there's there everything looks like basically the color of the firelight that you have yeah uh, so, they're to quote here so let me bring that up they, they said uh this is kind of before the next range of big battles so there's a lot more smooth check texture there's still wrinkles and lines and shape and form but they're not so battle scarred but they're dealing with some skin conditions because of their exposure <laughs> to the sun i'm glad <laughs> They've got some acne, some psoriasis they're dealing yeah. with. Nothing yeah, quite. Thing. I mean, look, frankly, that's that's accurate, right? The I'm orcs, sorry, but nothing orcs. quite beats the skin condition that we saw with this guy. <laughs> well, I was going to say this <laughs> what's, was the previous picture, where, but it was on the wrong side of his face. Um, the, the the other picture that you showed us, it you know, was maybe one of his ancestors. Um, this guy? Oh, there right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah. A little pustule popping yeah. out. Yeah, that was pretty gross. Yeah. I like it. In a few hundred like years, that, that might turn into uh, something larger. So, but yeah, something yeah, yeah, that yeah. remains the same for the orcs apparently is Which, a lack of dentistry. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. And you know, it's 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 one of the questions that comes up with orcs, which is really interesting. Is you know, given the nature of orcs, is that their lives are brutal and short because of the society that they're in. But one of the valid questions is, if they manage to survive getting killed, shanked over the years are they immortal the way elves are do they do they would they live forever would you have could you have an orc that's actually thousands of years old if if he managed to survive the uh the the uh, brutality of the co- tribal culture hmm. uh, well uh, yeah may, maybe well their, their teeth wouldn't uh, last for much, much longer <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah I, uh i don't know uh, i mean uh, there's never is there a point in the Silmarillion where there is an an orcish culture that's hinted at at all? Because there's no, it's just war. There's no, uh, you know, there, there's no. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It's, are there roaming? Are there anything else than roaming bands of orcs that come out of you know Thangorodrum and and Angband? Well, there's armies, right? They, so their culture yes. is one of servitude, or they're 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 the they're the brute slaves of of Morgoth. They do all the the heavy lifting and you know the building and and you know so they're they're, they're just going to be a, a slavish culture yeah. um on their own they're probably tribal um he obviously tolkien get, lets us know a little bit about orcish culture from kirith ungol um and what he what he tells us about the orcs there um mm-hmm. and, and as i be... said they have restaurants because they know what a menu is <laughs> no <Yeah. laughs> the meat's always back on the menu i mean that's one. it is one of the that's most quoted quoted lines and it's it not good, from tolkien I not from tolkien it was a funny line i laughed <laughs> when, it, when it came out but but not Tolkien. yeah all right well i think i think that covers the orcs i mean I, I i have no problems with the way they look at all i'm gonna have a problem if they if they start making the orcs into some sort of uh, character that we are supposed to 
uh, identify with that we are supposed to pity a little bit right that's that's not who they are i mean perhaps pity in the sense that they came from elves uh but uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't want. To, I don't want to know that an orc is uh, an orc because of some sort of the way that they were treated, and now we have to identify with them and make them uh, right. They were, they were all orcs because they were bullied when they were young. Don't you? Yeah, know no. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one of the big reveals in this article that we were talking about. I don't know if we were recording or not, but we were recording. Mm -hmm. um, was the, um, the 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 female orcs. Um, and right. how it seems like in Peter Jackson's adaptation, orcs were just kind of spawned out of the earth. There wasn't really any kind of um, uh, civilization for orcs. It was just they were just born. Yeah. They were bred to be servants and slaves, and then they would just die horrible, brutal deaths. But it's, it wasn't like they were fighting for their civilization back home, yeah. or like they had like they had like two little orcs that they had to get back to back home. You know. I, so I'm I'm curious where they're going to go with these female orcs and, and yeah. what that's what that's going to reveal about orcs. Well, in Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, he had to. I think he he actually said this in an interview that he had to take his orcs. Uh, and uh, do I have an urukai here? I don't think I have an urukai here. Um, but uh, he had to take them and uh, have Saruman create a create a quick army. Um, and so there were the urukai, which are Saruman's orcs that he bred, well, that he created, where in the books, I believe it wrote, writes that they were bred, I believe. Is that right, Michael? Yes. Pretty sure, which would mean that there were female orcs there too. So he just created orc cocoons um, in Saruman's that you know had no bearing at all into uh, uh, what Tolkien wrote in The Lord of the Rings. But, but ultimately, all the orcs uh, procreate, and uh, but were originally elves too. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's plenty of... Um, room in Tolkien in um, Peter Jackson's version. I mean, he, he, it only shows us how Saruman creates orcs, um, and and so you know, presumably it doesn't have to be that way in in Mordor. The, all the Mordor orcs and Moria orcs. Um, yeah. So because the Urukai are something somewhat different. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. That's this. I, I'm 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 um, in in support of everything I'm seeing on the orcs here. I, I'm yeah, liking, cool. liking them is not the right word. And yeah. I don't think, I, I suspect they will not make them that sympathetic because like visually speaking, they've done such an excellent job of making them just horrible. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, like, like that. there's nothing sympathetic about this. This is, there's nothing but scary and, and evil and, um, uh, you know, the stuff of nightmares here. So that's, yeah. that's, that's a good sign for me. I just can't wait for the chick fight. <laughs> <laughs> I will sit there drinking whiskey if you're right. I'll be like, oh every <laughs> I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to be there. It's got to be like that. There, it's good. It's going to be the end of season one. It's going to be the female orc that's a commander of armies against Galadriel. Mark my words. It'll be there. This is what uh, is important to them. So it'll be there. I, my cynicism is so high right now. I don't think it can get any higher. It's uh, <laughs> that's the best part of these so, videos. Is, is, yeah. is how torqued yeah. you are. Yeah. Anyway, well, I, let us know what you think, guys. I'm not. I don't. Yeah. The orcs are look great. I mean, how hard is it to get orcs right? I will say that I don't think they got Trollocs right in um, uh, Wheel of Time by Amazon. I think they were a little bit too CGI and too over the top. But mm, yeah, mm, that, that's my imagination speaking. Here, the orcs look good. I'm fine with them. I just want them to create the characters that are evil and that are right and that aren't going to be sympathetic and that aren't aren't going to uh, promote a message instead of promoting the story. You don't think they're going to go Cruella on these orcs? They're Cruella gonna, or Maleficent? No. They're, they're going to explain their side of the story. You don't think they're going to do that? That's season two, Dan. No. Yeah. <laughs> season two. Yeah, you have to make them evil first before you yeah. can redeem them. Okay. Yeah, that's the way that Disney works this thing. So, All right. <laughs> Talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.